IDI or diesel, so it shouldn't be doing that. Get her warmed up, and this is what she does. Great. Finally back on the 76 again. Uh, I got all the wheels finally <coughs> polished up. Finished this one tonight. Turned out really nice. I'll clean the tires up and clean the, the slots themselves out uh, when I get ready to put them on. But I have new caps for them. So the last thing I want to do, so I can at least start driving this a little bit, is get the valve stem seals changed because she's kind of a bit of an oil burner and I think that'll keep it uh, tolerable for a little while. So I went ahead and did the uh, uh, two, three, and four. Four is not done because I can't get my tool in there that last one, so I'm going to have to get a different compressor tool to do that last one. My uh, tool that I use, this one here, is it hits the firewall, so I got to. There's another one they make that's an adjustable one, and see if I can locate it. So I figure I'll show you how I do it by using number one as an example. First thing I'll do. Hopefully it stays. <clears throat> so I'll pull the plug. First thing I'll do. Looks a little oily, not bad. And then the next thing you want to do, you can install your, this is a, looks like the one end of a compression tester, but it's got no uh, little needle valve or reed valve or whatever those are called. <clears throat> it's just there to inject air into the cylinder and it hooks into your compressor line. This is a Lyle part or tool specifically for this. And it threads in like crap. There we go. So you thread it in there. <clears throat> just snug it up. There's no hex to grab a hold of the dang thing and take it out if it gets stuck. So don't go too tight on it. It does have O-rings on it. So before you fill it with air, you want to pull the rockers. What happens is one of the valves may be open, so it isn't gonna, it won't pressurize. And I'll put the rockers in. Try to keep everything in the same order. Now with the valves shut, I will pressurize it. Hopefully my air compressor doesn't turn on. It might in the video. Keep your hand away from the fan. <laughs> it's a clutch fan. But, uh, if it's not, it'll definitely, if the cylinder's up, it'll push the cylinder down. So keep your hands clear. Now what I like to do, these keepers are seated real well under the valve, so when it pressurized, I'll take a socket that's bigger than the valve stem and keeper and I'll bang on it and you can feel it change sound. It'll sound like it's trying to open the valve and all of a sudden you'll just feel the spring, you'll feel it actually soften up and then it'll change sound. See? What that did is it loosened it up on the keeper so that when you go to use the bar to loosen or to uh, push down the keeper <coughs> I'm sorry, the retainer to get the keepers out, they won't be stuck because they get stuck over time. You want to be careful when you're doing that because you're hitting this damn thing too hard. You can dislodge the keepers and everything come apart on you without even having anything set up on it. And the valve could drop. So you just want to give it some good wax, just enough to break this free of the keepers. See if I can do this on camera and not look like a complete idiot. Sometimes these don't go as easily as they 
always do. You know, see how that just came down nicely? Now, had I not smacked that with the socket and extension, there's a good chance it would have pulled the valve and everything open. So it's something I started doing a long time ago. I learned that if you give it a little taps, she'll come right out. No problems there. All I'm using, I just use a little washer, which you don't really have to use a washer, but sometimes it helps. And I'll just use the nut that was up here. Remove your spring. Sometimes the shim, if there's a shim, it'll stick to the spring, so watch that. And not always. So far I've been only I've only found one broken seal, but all these are rock hard. I can understand why they're leaking a little bit. I think the exhaust valve here, that one was broken half. And the plug was very oily, so you can obviously looking at the plug you can tell you that that valve stem seal was trash. Let's get my replacement. Push it down on there. She fit nice and snug. Put the valve spring back on. Oops, got my washer. If you got a little shop compressor, this thing's probably going to go or turn on a lot. There's Depending on how tight your engine is, there's going to be some blow by on the rings. Okay. Usually putting these in is a little bit easier than getting them out. You can kind of tell when to stop. And that's it. All there is to her. Jump over to the next one. The exhaust valves have been a little bit more difficult. I don't know why. All of them, the keepers are really sticky. It's a weird angle. Hmm. Come around this way. <coughs> there it goes. Fortunately, these were uh, non-adjustable. I thought at first when I saw the screw-in studs and I pulled the valve covers on. Oh, nice! But they were either adjustable or non-adjustable. These are the non-adjustable variety. DOVEC heads, which they came both ways. You see how the shim stuck to the spring? Gotta be careful of that when put it back in. Oh, see that thing? It's not even really doing anything. Not broke, but she's hard as a rock. I don't need that hooked up to it anymore. There we go. I'm done with that part. <clears throat> oh, well, there's one one thing I skipped. But with the air, I'd seat the valve. Kind of make sure the keepers are biting. I do that with the air still on it. You can do it with it on or off. I don't think it matters. Just 
make sure that the keepers are sitting. And what I was doing with the push rods is you got to kind of feel around. You, the push rod will drop anywhere down in there and you just kind of, I spin it around. You can feel it when it hits the, the cup of the lifter. And you just kind of fish around you get in and it'll spin real smooth. <clears throat> you'll you'll kind of feel it when you're in the right spot and because these are canned valve obviously the, the push rods are not straight down in and these being a non-adjustable torque down style you just run them down to the bottom on this particular engine which is a uh, 7071 I think the blocks a 71 Heads are 70, but on this particular application, it's 18 to 22 foot pounds. And you just run them down to the bottom. And they'll start opening a valve or whatever. That's the normal. Once you start feeling it tight, there we go. Same way with this one. Works get tight. Done. And that is all there is to it. The changing valve stem seals. Made a couple different tools. Like if there was a shaft style, uh, this one here, I I kind of rigged up to work on a small block Ford, I think. It's out of a car type situation because it would have to go this way and go down. But this one here, same story, but it would be designed, either one of these would work underneath a shaft and you just mount the shaft back in there and you, you know push down once you get the rockers. I have a dummy shaft that I use in the case if I'm doing something like that. I'll have a shaft that have no rockers, just the uh, stands and stuff on it and I'll just use this to get underneath it but uh, what did I do with it this is your off-the-shelf KD tool uh, it's uh, KD number 912 uh, I think they still sell this they also make the one I gotta get for that one down there is gonna be on a handle and you can adjust its positioning it'll be a little shorter probably about this long and I think the handle you can change its angle that's what I have in mind. I'm going to have to find for that. I don't have one of those. I never really had a need for one. But uh, my dad's had this one laying around. Anyways, I wanted to at least show you one pair. And then, of course, you know, take this guy out here. Watch this get stuck here on this one. Oh, no, I didn't. But yeah, if these, I've had these get stuck before. And see, there's no hex down here. So if that sucker gets stuck in there, you're you're pretty much screwed. It'll start wadding up on the hose. Or if you get lucky, you can get some pliers down there and grab it by the compression part portion here. But there's other brands that have a hex here in case they do happen to get stuck in the spark plug hole. Because that has happened before. I've had it happen before. Not pretty. And here, this is the only one that's missing, but you can see the plug. You see how dark, oily it is? I'm willing to bet you if I take that one out, when I get it out of there, it's going to be broken like this one. See, that thing was broke right in half. And you can see all the oil. This one's oil fouled too. These two didn't look too bad. A little... Little rat nasty. This one wasn't really bad at all, but they were still intact, not broken yet. But they were. These are all hard as a rock, and they these slid up and down really. I mean, they're they're not they're barely sealing. You know, this one being broke, I'm not surprised. I'm willing to bet you this one's probably broke. And this was this is just the passenger side. You know, one, two, three, and four. I haven't even got to the driver's bank, which is actually the worst one. That one's the one that smokes the worst. So I'm wondering if we'll find some even worse plugs and some uh, really destroyed stem seals in that one. That'd be interesting. So <clears throat> when I get that one apart, we'll uh, we'll see what it's like over there. But usually if your rig 
smokes a little bit. It, it, it can be the rings, but at least in my experience with these Fords, a lot of times it's just the valve stem seals. I mean, unless the thing is like really barrel rolling smoke out of it. If it's a puff on the startup or you're just idling and it's a little bit, generally it's just these stupid valve stem seals. I mean, if it's really rolling some smoke, it's probably got some other issues, but. Oh no, what the f was that? The motor, he's throwing a rod. You know, these aren't like the O-rings and small block Chevys. These will go away. So I, I wouldn't doubt if these are original seals. If the engine hasn't been touched. I, I don't think I don't think anyone's been into this, but I don't I don't know. I don't know the history on this 460. This this is the second or third 460 in this truck, and I can't even tell you where we got this one from. If you take the seals off and you take the valve and you can shake it in the guide, I mean like really shake it. Uh yeah. <laughs> the newest seals in the world will not seal that up. But I didn't show you, and I probably should have, I did a couple of the other ones where I just took and wiggled the valve a little bit. And yeah, there's a tiny bit of play, it's fractional. This was obvious play, but it wasn't nothing to be concerned with. You know, I couldn't just go wang, 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 you know, wiggle the thing around. Wang, 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 wang. Just making sure you heard. What the hell is that? <laughs> so. It's getting old. I wouldn't doubt if these are original 70s heads. Uh, I wouldn't even doubt if the exhaust valves are starting to sink into the seats because it doesn't have hardened seats. But I've been running this thing on unleaded for I don't know how long. Unless somebody's went through these, which is possible, but not to my knowledge. Well, we'll get her done. I think the tool I need to get for that back one will kind of help on this side here. I almost started with this side, but I thought, yeah, I'm only going to get two or three in and get disgruntled and never finish it. So I thought I could get all of these on this side, but I got all but one. I'm happy with that. So what comes next? The mechanic, you know, mechanicals. Uh... We're experiencing mechanical issues. As you'll see in our next episode. <laughs>